This is my second video on myoglobin and hemoglobin. The learning objectives are to tell how the Bohr effect and CO2 contribute to O2 delivery, tell what BPG is and how it improves O2 delivery to the tissues, describe hemoglobin gene expression during development and fetal hemoglobin function, be able to tell how O2 transport from maternal hemoglobin to fetal hemoglobin is facilitated. So the Bohr effect, hemoglobin function and modulation. Again, Bohr effect involves pH. CO2 effect is carbamino hemoglobin. We'll talk about that. And then BPG binding, that, that's very important in the, uh, for fetal hemoglobin because fetal hemoglobin uh, binds uh, BPG less tightly than adult hemoglobin, allowing the transport of oxygen from the adult. So here is a, the Bohr effect, and this was discovered by Christian Bohr, Danish physiology, and protons, as uh, I mentioned previously, hydrogen bonding stabilizes the deoxy form of hemoglobin, or the taut or type form, and so those increasing salt bridges, uh, here's one in the beta chain between histidine 46 and aspartate 94, and that tightness, the protons added to that, which uh, stabilizes, uh, facilitates O2 delivery to the tissues. Um, metabolic metabolizing tissues such as muscle has lactic acid and other acid metabolites in it that lowers the pH producing more protons and those protons stabilize the deoxy form and that aids in the delivery of oxygen so here you see two oxygen binding curves this is percent saturation here and partial pressure down uh, on the x-axis uh, partial pressure of O2 on the x-axis so you can see that at pH 7 6 in the lung it has a higher, the hemoglobin has a higher affinity for the oxygen, and then out at 7.2, out in the tissues, it gets pushed to the right, uh, lowers the affinity for oxygen, it results in better delivery of oxygen to the tissues. So here's an example. Here's myoglobin, seven, pH 7.6, 7.4, and 7.2, hemoglobin saturation, tissues, PO2 across the bottom, and the Bohr effect. And so you can see that normally we want to go to 98% saturation with the lungs, and, uh, and then we're going to deliver the tissue, say, out at 20, at a uh, P PO2 of 20, and that causes a, a difference. So if we do that at pH 7, 6, we only get 52% of the oxygen delivered. If we do it, however, out of the, we bind it at 7, 6 and deliver it at 7, 2, then we get only 26 left on it. So we get a 26% increase in the amount delivered to the tissues. So more oxygen delivered to the tissues by the decrease in pH. Are the hydrogen bonds changing? Uh, are the uh, changing the structure of, of the hemoglobin. Carbamino hemoglobin. Here's the amino terminus of hemoglobin, where R is the rest of the hemoglobin molecule. Carbon dioxide will react with that to form car carbamino hemoglobin. Here's the nitrogen, and here's the carboxyl group as associated with that. And it's also called a carbamate. And in about 20% of the hemoglobin will be, will be carrying CO2 as it goes back to the lungs. And when that happens, you get the release of two protons. Two protons very much in increase the, uh, the Bohr effect and the unloading of oxygen out in the tissue. So CO2 adds an additional uh, effort to release oxygen out in the tissue. So we're making a lot of CO2 in the, in the tissues as well as protons. And then the CO2, is when it binds, releases even more protons to force it into the deoxy state and deliver oxygen better. Here's hemoglobin saturation. Here's PO2 in the lungs and in the tissues here. And here we have PCO2 uh, pressures of 20, 40, and 80. Uh, and you can see that normally we, at low PO2 is where we are in the lungs and we get almost total saturation, uh, 97%. And then if we go out in the tissues, we are uh, say at 50% out there at PCO2, but if we, and we get 47% delivery. However, if we shift that PCO2 at, in the tissues to 80, then we get much higher delivery out in the tissues. So uh, very little oxygen left on, uh, on the hemoglobin when it's delivered. So you get a much better delivery, you get 80% delivery then. So lung PCO2 of 20, tissue PCO2 of 80, 33% more O2 delivered due to the change in PCO2.
BPG is 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate or 2,3-diphosphoglycerate, however you want to do it. Usually it's BPG now rather than, B, uh, than DPG. And so it stabilizes the tight or deoxy uh, form via ionic crosslinks with the beta subunits. Increased BPG promotes O2 release from hemoglobin. BPG increases the RBCs uh, during uh, increases RBCs increases in the RBCs during hypoxia, anemia, smoking, and high altitude. People living at high altitudes have higher levels of BPG. It takes a few days to adjust to that, but you can happen. And then here is where it binds. You see the two beta subunits that have positive charge, and then the, the BPG has a negative charge on it and binds right there in that cavity between the two beta subunits. And so, it's, again, we get a shift on the curve to the right, just like we do with CO2 and protein. Protons. And so here's BPG uh, zero. It's almost hyperbolic, but then when you shift it uh, with BPG normal and then BPG added for high altitudes, you can see it shifts to the to the right here. And so that oxygen, that BPG, has a lower affinity for the oxygen, so it get it it almost doesn't get quite as well saturated, but it delivers a, a higher percentage of it, delivers it better. Uh, with oxyhemoglobin, there's no central cavity here, and you can't get BPG to bind. So it can only bind in the deoxy form. So here's how BPG is made. Glucose goes to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, and then there's this BPG shunt in which we get a 2,3-BPG mutase to make 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate, or BPG. That can be broken down back in this way by, the, by a phosphatase to go to 3-phosphoglycerate and then the lactate. So here's the... Uh, the, the uh, what happens is when you're storing red blood cells, remember RBCs can only do glycolysis. They have no mitochondria for oxidative phosphorylation. So to keep blood going in uh, storage, glucose is added as well as adenine and, uh, uh, and uh, inosine. So here's inosine and adenine added to the storage, and that increases blood storage and blood banks up to 35 or 40 days because they need the glucose for energy to be able to make BPG. If they can't make BPG, when you give, give that old blood to somebody, you wouldn't get very good transport to the uh, tissues, and it would be no, no value to the patient. So here, yeah, here's inosine and uh, provide and an ATP or adenines added to that can make ATP to increase the production of BPG. BPG aids O2 delivery without significantly reducing O2 binding in the lungs. So here is the lungs and here is the uh, what happens out in the tissues. So you go from 82% without BPG to 45% delivery with BPG. So it gets it's a 3.3 uh, fold times more O2 delivered with BPG than without BPG. So it helps a lot. Now, hemoglobin gene expression. We have multiple hemoglobins. Normal adult hemoglobin, HBA, has two alpha chains and two beta chains, and, and that's 90% of our hemoglobin. Fetal hemoglobin has two alpha chains and two gamma chains, and that's about uh, less than 2%. Uh, then we have a hemoglobin A2, that's two alphas and two deltas, and that's about 2 to 5%. That varies with different people. Then there's hemoglobin A1C, which has uh, alpha and beta chains with glucose attached, and that's 3 to 9%. So uh, hemoglobin A2, which is two alphas and two deltas, about 2% here, right? So uh, that, that's, a, yeah, that's about right. That's about right. Normal hemoglobin A1C glycation in uh, diabetes. So you have this abnormal glycated uh, hemoglobin here. So if let's look at, uh, at, at inception, nine months before you're born, you, you start making uh, epsilon. So you make the you make the ep, have the epsilon chain of hemoglobin, uh, that that is the complement of the beta chain that you'll end up with as an adult, 
and the zeta chain, which is the complement of the alpha chain that you end up with adult. At about three months uh, gestation, you no longer have any epsilon and you no longer have any zeta. You have only alpha for the alpha chain, but then you have you, the epsilon has been replaced by gamma, and so you have the gamma that that persists until you're just before you start uh, to be born, and then that decreases and goes down to almost zero, but not quite zero, and the beta chain comes up and becomes beta. Also, just before we're born, we start making a little delta, and and we don't really know the reason for delta but we do make it and so we have a little of that formed as well so uh, adult hemoglobin is going to have primarily alpha beta some fetal and some uh, a2 which is the delta so here is the the reason we have fetal hemoglobin is it aids in the transport of oxygen from the mother to the fetus and so here is the fetal hemoglobin has a higher affinity for oxygen than does adult hemoglobin. So the mother can transport oxygen across the placenta to oxygenate the hemoglobin of the baby. So it has a higher uh, affinity for that oxygen. So hemoglobin A beta chain has a histidine at 43 with a plus charge on it, whereas fetal hemoglobin, the gamma chain, has a serine at 143, no charge. So fetal hemoglobin binds BPG less tightly than hemoglobin A, favoring O2 transfer from hemoglobin A to hemoglobin F. So here again is the structure, and you can see the binding site with the, uh, there's a, uh, normally you have a, a, a lysine here, and here, and then you replace that, well, a histidine here and here, and you replace those histidines with serines. And so the serines go in there, and then this doesn't bind as tightly because the histidine has a positive charge, and the serines have no positive charge. So it knocks off some positive charge here and reduces the binding of BPG to the fetal hemoglobin. So the BPG then has a, a higher affinity. So here's the combined effect of pH, CO2, and BPG. So hemoglobin with oxygen in the lungs uh, releases the protons, releases CO2, which we exhale, and BPG can't bind to it. As it goes out into the tissues, the O2 gets uh, lost, uh, taken up, and used for metabolism. CO2 from metabolism will bind to the uh, make carboxy uh, carbon carboxyhemoglobin and then we bind protons and we bind PPG and that forces off even more oxygen get better oxygenation of the tissue better delivery so that this process is as efficient as possible and that's all of that